it's 9.30, and you were scheduled at work 15 minutes ago. Several obstacles have slowed you down. The toilet overflowed, and you had to mop up all of the smelly overflow. You burnt the eggs and scratched the grits because you were trying to brush your teeth, get dressed, and do your eldest daughter's hair all at once. And now, there's one more major obstacle threatening to slow you down further. Hear that? Yep, it's the train. And it's on time this morning. <sighs> oh well. Boss, correction. I'll be 45 minutes late for work today. Doesn't it seem like there are a million things that could go wrong in just the first few hours of the day? Wow. <laughs> I consider that we all have real lives. And within those real lives, there are real circumstances that we face. I want you to consider Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3. It reads, Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. When I consider what it means to incline my ear to God, I must first consider what my ear is tuned into in the first place. There are things that are consuming my mind. Again, we talked about earlier the cares of the morning, trying to get dressed and cooking breakfast and getting the kids together, trying to get across the railroad tracks before the train comes. And when we are combating all of these external triggers, life can get tough and we can find ourselves bogged down emotionally with all the things that we have to deal with. So my ear naturally is already inclined to the mess, the jargon, the stress, and the emotional ups and downs that life has to offer. For example, it doesn't take a lot for me to become stressed or at least tempted to feel stress when something doesn't go the way I need it to. Again, if I'm late or if I'm expecting a package in the mail, if perhaps I'm hoping that my spouse would bring home something that I had requested for them to bring home in advance and then they forget. I'm hoping the children do what I've asked them to do, but hey, they're sloppy when it comes to obeying, so they didn't do it. And there we go again with the emotional triggers and my ear, because it's already inclined to the negativity, I just throw up my hands in disgust. I might cuss, I might scream, I might pull out my hair. I may say or think things that for a Christian, I don't really wanna say or think. But the reality is my ear is inclined to my flesh. It is inclined to the negativity that surrounds me. Let's go a little deeper. When Jesus says to incline your ear unto him, what he's really telling you and I, take a break. Pause from an immediate response to the things that you are facing in a day's time, in a moment's time. And instead of being so heavily in tune with the disastrous things that life will toss at you, focus in on my voice. 
Because you see, my voice is peace. My voice will guide you away from the harbor of frustration. Now, somebody's saying, well, pastor, how do we do that? That seems like a conundrum. Seems hard to do. And in your flesh and mine, you better believe it's hard. We cultivate this relationship with God over time. Where we pull away from the things that life requires of us and we plug into God early each morning with devotion time, with prayer. You see, that's the quiet time once cultivated that encourages my day. It encourages me in the very midst of the trouble that is seeking to grab my ear, my attention, or my thoughts. And how does it do that? You see, when I take the time to pause and seek God's face in the morning, I am connecting to his frequency. And by so doing, I am disconnecting from my flesh, from the emotional responses that I normally run to when life tosses the waves of trouble in my direction. Through prayer, through meditation, through talking to God and being honest with him, I am learning to program myself for the future moments when darts will be tossed at my conscience, when life will surround me with trouble, when things will fire, misfire, without or beyond my control. But because I've gotten that connection with God in the morning, because I've put my eyes upon him early, I'm now hearing him speak. And it helps me to respond to these triggers, to these circumstances in a way that was not possible for me to do before. Incline. In other words, lean your focus and your attention towards me is what God is saying. You're so busy worrying about making a dollar. You're so busy about your reputation. You're so busy worried about how you look in front of people. You're so worried about money. You're so worried about everything else in this life that you're juggling these cares. But just guide your ear, your mind towards my voice. And what's the promise here in Isaiah 55, 3? God says, if you come unto me and hear him, your soul shall live. If you unplug from the external things that are seeking to poke you, roast you, frustrate you, if you stop and you pause, and instead of hearing the emotional triggers that the enemy is tossing back and forth in between your ears and your conscience, if you hear that still small voice of God that you have learned to hear early in the morning when you pray, when you meditate, then he has promised to give you life. But that life that he's talking about is a revival energy a hey, pick me up because it's often throughout the day that we need that i'm reminded of the super mario brothers game that we that we played as kids on the nintendo system and as mario's going through this obstacle course if you will he gets a mushroom or a star or something to encourage him along his journey it's a power up well, that morning breakfast, or that morning nourishment of the word 
is my pick-me-up, it's my power-up, it's my mushroom, it's my star. And when I connect with God in this way, I am able to pause in the midst of a trigger, in the midst of some storm, and hear God's voice. It's not very difficult. I know that life comes at us quickly. But your day is won or lost at the beginning. Will you take the time to pray, to meditate, to look up into the heavens and to ask God for guidance? Father in heaven, I am so grateful that I can come to you and be replenished and have life pumped back into me right when I need it. I'm grateful that I can ask you for your strength, that I can unplug and disconnect from the things that would seek to frustrate me. And I can prepare myself with the strength that I need each morning for whatever lies ahead. Grant me your presence, O oh God, and encourage me this day. For I pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to encourage you to share this presentation. And have a blessed day. Thank you.